and in some cases, a surprise for the crews. How do you feel about coming in second? Uh, we're in second place. I had no idea we were right that now. close. I didn't know we were that far up. Um, right now, we've got more battery power than we had this morning. We've been charging up our batteries as we've been running. So we've been doing a pretty conservative race. We're worried about the weather ahead. And for Western Washington University, it provided the opportunity to reorient its car to the afternoon sun. Fine. 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 Along the race route, the solar cars captured the imagination of old and young. I think it's grand in the Department of Energy. There's so few things that, uh, that I think are worthwhile investments on the part of our government. And an investment in these children is a, a good investment. At 6.30 p.m. each day, teams were allowed two hours of battery charging in the evening sunlight. teams which had not reached the finish line charged on the road. After the evening charge, the cars were impounded for the night. The Department of Energy presented daily awards honoring the top three finishers and recognizing teamwork and sportsmanship. In the spirit of the Tour de France's yellow victor shirt, GM Sunrace USA presented the daily first place team with the sunshine orange polo shirt and the Chevy red bow tie hat. With the race really consisting of 11 individual daily races, a team's fortunes could change quickly. After finishing first on day two, the pride of Maryland saw its battery power depleted on day three. We ran hard yesterday and our batteries are fairly well depleted. And uh, we've also been having some trouble with our peak power trackers, getting the energy back from the array into the system. And uh, they didn't seem to be charging just now. So we had to uh, pull over and we're going to troubleshoot the system, see if we can get some of that power back. Because right now our batteries are too weak to go. As the team members systematically went over the car, they only had to look to the road to be reminded that their lead was slipping away. You got it's dark. It's dark. I'm sorry. Really it's dark. Sunrays proved to be more than a competition between the teams. They were also battling the elements. Eleven days of racing subjected the teams to near 100 degree temperatures or heavy rains and thunderstorms. Conditions which caused everything from electrical shorts to solar panels warping in excess heat. In some cases, the good news for local farmers was bad news for the sun racers. It's been dry for the last two or three weeks. Up until, the up until yesterday. Yeah, the right first now. rain in three weeks, yeah. The competitors knew this was a race of science and strategy. The team with the best of both would find itself in the winner's circle. Each day, a different team put together the right plan to earn first place. For the Starduster team from Wooster Polytechnic Institute, success came in the shadow of the new Saturn plant. We've been off the road for the past day and a half, and so we've had a lot of juice stored up in our batteries, and our main objective today was to get the orange uh, shirts. I'd also like to uh, call up Avi Klinger. Avi was also a, a driver today. He's a team captain, and uh, between the two of us, we got us here today. Okay, what, did you get an unofficial time? Uh, no, I don't have an unofficial time. Unofficial time is about uh, seven hours. Seven not hours. bad, not bad. Hopefully, uh, we'll get some good sunlight tonight. Get our batteries <laughs> like tonight, huh? <laughs> That'd be neat. <laughs> the win had special meaning for WPI. One of the school's better-known alumni, GM Chairman Robert Stemple, was on hand to present the awards at Spring Hill. And as they neared the halfway mark, some teams found a pep talk was in order. Everybody's watching this now. We did come in right. second. Right. So people got to keep it clean. We could do it. Let's yeah. pop again. Right. Yeah. The teams of GM Sunray shared a lot with the earlier auto pioneers. Their one-of-a-kind cars demanded a lot of care and attention. Each night, they took what they had learned from the day's racing and applied it to their game plan. Some teams changed strategy, while others worked on the hardware. What we're doing here is getting a section of uh, oval KXLs ready to replace uh, a weaker set on the car. What happened to the ones on the car? Um, well, they're prototype cells, and uh, we're having some problems with them, uh, not getting very much power from them. And Westinghouse managed to set up a, a new set here to replace them with to get some more power. 
The budgets for the different solar teams could be measured by their accommodations. Some with extensive sponsorship stayed in hotels. Many entered Sunrace with more modest budgets. Support came not as dollars, but from the parents and friends who brought their own motor homes and prepared breakfast each morning for the team. Some teams slept where they could, while others fashioned an impromptu laundry to dry out after a days of rain. The hills of Tennessee and Kentucky provided Sunrace with a different kind of challenge. These were some of the shorter legs in the race, but the hills required crews to use more of their precious battery power. Small towns along the rural two-lane roads welcomed GM Sunrace USA with open arms. They allowed their local gas stations and schools to be transformed into checkpoints and pit stops for the young racers. The overnight stop at the GM Corvette plant in Bowling Green, Kentucky was typical of the positive response. It helped the young spectators realize that this indeed was a sport. But in order to compete in this game, you have to know your math and sciences. I designed the aerodynamics of the car, and in fact, uh, the design that you see is, is about 80 percent my design. I know. As science teacher, I'm very interested in young ladies being in in the uh, science field. One of the things we've done is solar cars. Oh, yeah. And That's we right. want to know, I would like to know, if you think that it would be possible for 6th and 7th and 8th graders to make a soapbox uh, solar car. Definitely. I think a soapbox solar car would be very Coming? simple and a good, very good experience for the students. Mornings weren't all work for the teams. There was also time to share some good-natured ribbing over their newfound celebrity status. It's got your name in it. Dude. Yeah. Very much. The spirit of competition heated up in the sunny weather which graced the second half of Sun Race. The race to Louisville and historic Churchill Downs saw one of the fastest legs. The setting for the finish may have inspired the exciting neck-and-neck -neck competition between Michigan and MIT. The Sunrunner chased the Selectria 7 through the streets of Louisville as they neared the checkered flag. The classic derby-style finish gave Michigan the roses with a 15-second better time than MIT. A lot more exciting driving the car when you're going above 30. Um, then in the last couple miles, you know, there are a few teams that were uh, up there. Western Washington was up there. You know, they're in second place right behind us. MIT is in third place right behind us. And uh, to, to have it come down to 15 seconds was just incredible. It was a lot of fun. It was very exhilarating. The good-natured spirit of the competition was evident as the two teams compared notes. The strategy is kind of, um, or at least superficially, it appears to be kind of erratic. I don't know. Is, it, uh, is that true or is it? It's working. <laughs> it's working. I can't argue with that. I just... Why are you guys listening to us? <laughs> no, we don't listen to you. We just, you know, we just seem to be in the same vicinity as your car a lot of the time. Well, was it, then, we do our best. That must mean that yours is erratic, too. <laughs> The good luck was shared by all the teams. 23 cars out of a field of 32 finished the race in Louisville under solar power, the highest number since the race started in Orlando. Sun Race made the move from horse racing to horse power as it crossed into Indiana. Destination, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Sunshine held as the teams crossed the Ohio River. Some of the teams opted to take advantage of the good sunlight. The impromptu roadside charge offered local residents a first-hand look at this future technology. GM Sunrace USA made history by being the only racing event other than the Indy 500 to use the Indianapolis Motor Speedway as part of its official course. We wanted Indy. We wanted Indy. A little slower than normal, but we won, didn't we? Oh, it was beautiful. I mean, it was like there were some times where we couldn't use the energy we had due to the speed limits. We were wasting it, just throwing it right out. Any change in strategy? What are you looking to do tomorrow? Well, we've got the car all figured out. It took us, we took time for one day to sit down and figure out our battery situation and what we'd have to do, but now we understand how it works really well, so from here on out, if it stays sunny, we're going to be pretty good. With only three days left, Michigan held its overall lead, with MIT second and Western Washington rounding out the top three.